This video will discuss the magnetic fields of planets and introduce us to some of the properties of magnetic fields, how magnetic fields are produced, and what their benefits are in the, uh, in the solar system, particularly the Earth. So we start by discussing magnets in general. You've probably played with some magnets. You've discovered that they have two poles, so-called poles, North Pole and South Pole, that if you put two South Poles together, the magnets repel. If you have a North Pole near a South Pole, they will attract. So there's force involved with magnets. Magnetism is an electrical property uh, due to moving charge. We're not going to go into all the details of it, but uh, it is true that magnets will exert forces on charged particles, on protons or electrons that are moving in the realm, in the region where there is magnetic field. The, uh, the magnet will apply a force to those uh, objects and what are drawn on this diagram are magnetic field lines and these help uh, physicists describe the force. Uh, the, taking a look at the motion of the particle along a magnetic field line there's no force but perpendicular to the magnetic field line there is a force on the particle. So just as uh, you know wind has a certain uh, speed and direction the magnetic field has a certain strength and direction and that can help uh, astronomers or physicists calculate force due to magnetism. Perhaps you've seen uh, iron filings on a piece of paper, a magnet below the paper, and the iron filings experience a force on them and these needle-like uh, pieces of iron tend to line up along the magnetic field direction. So they reveal to us this uh, magnetic field. The magnetic field is invisible and uh, it's, it doesn't really exist, but uh, it's useful for doing calculations. So, um, magnetic field. The Earth possesses a magnetic field and um, so does Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, uh, Mercury a minor magnetic field, Venus just about zero magnetic field, and Mars about zero currently magnetic field. So there's a difference in the planets, and we'll talk about those in more detail as we uh, go through, but the Earth's magnetic field is beneficial, and it's kind of an umbrella, a protection against high-speed particles uh, coming from the sun, protons and electrons. As they get into the region where the magnetic field of the Earth is strong, these particles are deflected, so they don't come straight into the Earth but they are kind of guided around the Earth and guided to the North Pole of the Earth. So the Earth's magnetic field um, is strong in the region near the Earth. It's not extremely strong, but it's a, uh, uh, a measurable uh, strength that is there. So we're glad we have a magnetic field. How does the Earth possess a magnetic field? Why does it possess it? And to understand that, we need to talk about is there a magnet in the center of the Earth? Now, the Earth possesses a magnetic field similar to a bar magnet. Is there a magnet in the core of the Earth? The answer is no. Uh, geologists have uh, modeled the interior of the Earth. The temperature inside the Earth is too high for a solid piece of metal to exist. It would be melted. Also, even before this melting point temperature, over a hundred years ago, physicists learned that high temperature destroys permanent magnets. If the temperature is too high, a permanent magnet loses its organization of magnetic field. And uh, consequently, we know that the, we're confident that the Earth does not have a permanent magnet in the center. Well, if it doesn't have a permanent magnet, how do we create this magnetic field? Well, I mentioned that magnetism is related to electricity. And the current thinking is that there is an electrical current in the core of the Earth that creates an effective magnetic field like a bar magnet. There's evidence that the uh, magnetic field changes. It's been decreasing in strength for quite a while. Um, and our magnetic poles have been wandering. So these electrical currents are not constant, but they vary. And it's, it's a little bit dramatic. Um, in 1945, the north magnetic pole was at 74 degrees north and 100 degrees west. Um, so maybe another thing perhaps you don't realize, the Earth's magnetic north uh, 
pole is not at the geographic spin axis north pole. Um, in fact, this is a south pole here uh, that uh, is towards the north of the Earth, but minor point. Um, so we have the fact that the magnetic poles are not aligned right on the rotation axis of the Earth, and this is common for the other planets as well. And there's motion of the location of the poles, the magnetic poles. So here's what's happening in the north. Here's what's happening in the south. Again, the magnetic pole uh, position is not fixed. It's changing. And the current model is that we have a dynamo inside the uh, core of the Earth, that there's liquid, uh, iron and nickel, things that will conduct electricity, and there are currents. There's motion of this liquid and friction inside that separates charge and we have large currents, electrical currents, inside the core of the Earth that create the magnetic field. Uh, you know there are electromagnets that lift iron at junkyards. Electricity can create magnetic field. And the thinking is in the core of the Earth there are these large currents. The dynamo theory tells us that there will be a uh, magnetic field created when we have these currents in the core of a planet. The core of the planet needs to be liquid metal and it needs to be rotating reasonably rapidly to get a, a significant magnetic field. But that's the dynamo theory, that's the theory of why a planet has magnetic field. There are electrical currents in the core of the planet. Inside our Earth, the uh, earthquake waves propagate through the interior of the Earth and geologists know that there's a solid inner, innermost core, very dense, it's been compressed by the um, overlying layers of the Earth, and also, as the Earth formed, the heavy elements settled towards the core. So the iron and the nickel is down there, the crust made of silicon and other rocky type um, elements, um, but the heavy material settled towards the core, and we have iron and nickel in here. So the solid core, very high pressure. Outside of that are liquid core, where we have these electrical currents. And then there's a rocky mantle and a crust on top of that mantle. The crust fairly thin. Uh, that's our model for the interior of the Earth, provided by the study of how the earthquake waves travel through the Earth. As far as the interiors of other planets, the Jovian planets, uh, these gas planets are thought to have some type of core that could be rocky or icy under extreme pressure at the centers of these uh, gas giant planets. But there is a region here where there's a metallic form of hydrogen that's been pressed together at high pressure and uh, conducts electricity. And these, these planets have big magnetic fields. They spin rapidly. And it's also thought the dynamo theory uh, gives rise to magnetic fields around the Jovian planets. should also say the sun has a very strong magnetic field and uh, separation of charge inside the sun creates magnetic field. It rotates rapidly enough to have a magnetic field. So that's our introduction to planetary magnetism. We'll talk a little bit more in detail for each uh, planet that, uh, uh, that we encounter. I want to leave us with a uh, little discussion of aurora, with aurora. I said earlier that the magnetic field guides charged particles towards the pole of the planet. And the aurora are seen, if you go to Canada or uh, tip of South America, it's more likely to see aurora. You need to be somewhat near the north magnetic pole of the Earth or the south magnetic pole of the Earth. And the aurora are very brilliant nighttime displays of glowing gas. The charged particles from the sun are guided into the Earth's magnetic field. Some are trapped in the Earth's magnetic field. But the trapping is not perfect, and the particles can move down into the upper atmosphere of the Earth. When electrons collide with atoms in our atmosphere, the electrons will excite the electrons in those atoms through the collision process. They bump into them and give those atoms extra energy. Those atoms then, in our atmosphere, emit light. The electrons drop back down towards the nucleus. And when we know when an electron drops towards the nucleus, the atom emits light. So uh, we're seeing, I believe, oxygen here is the uh, gives us green color. And then astronomers, uh, space physicists, will 
send rockets into these aurora display to try to measure the electrical currents that are present here and uh, the workings of of the aurora um, the international space station orbits above the aurora and here's a photograph down towards the earth and looking at these uh, sheets of glowing atoms in the atmosphere of the earth caused by sheets of electrons dropping into the earth's atmosphere and energizing the atoms in the uh, earth's atmosphere the aurora effect happens on the gas giant planets as well so here's an example of saturn and the magnetic field of saturn has guided uh, protons and electrons and the electrons are very efficient at creating the aurora the electrons are bumping into the atoms in the atmosphere of saturn energizing them and then we have the aurora as a result uh, so Magnetic field, very interesting for planets. Keep reading and asking questions.